Um, in this next part, we're going to talk about sketches, and I'm going to just very, really, just really clear, quickly define what a sketch is. Okay, so might just want to jot this down. So a sketch is a musical phrase, <clears throat> oftentimes developed by a, co a composer, and then it, it it is taken. That musical phrase is taken, and that idea is expounded upon uh, a lot of times by an arranger upon different parts. The goal of the sketch. Okay, so essentially, essentially the sketch is developed by a composer. It's a musical phrase, and it, ideally, it is just uh, and in, in its inception, it's a thought process that the composer can put down on paper. But it doesn't have to be applied to any specific instrument, and that's kind of the key. So no specific instrument. The arranger will then take the sketch and develop the parts for the rest of the group. So like in a typical composer, uh, like a composer has an, a, a dedicated arranger. A lot of times, by default, the composer becomes the arranger if he doesn't, if it's not a real big project, or you know, if they elect to do the arranging themselves. But but the, the idea of the sketch is the sketch is just the model of the melodic phrase. So the way that, that a lot of modern composers use sketches is they'll say, here's the, here's the idea I have for this section, and they'll go and they'll make the phrase. Sorry. And they'll go, all right, I'm moving on to the next sketch. Now, what we just did when we were working on that this last time around is notice we stacked four parts. We, we did our loop function, we stacked four parts. In, in sketch mode, in your sketches idea, you don't mess around with the four parts. You make one part, and then you move on to a new part. Then you move on to a new part, and a new part. And then essentially, either the arranger or you yourself will come back to the sketches and build upon them, just the way that we did, part by part. Does that make sense? So instead of using all your, it's kind of the idea, is the, the idea is that if you're, if you're a composer and you're a music creator, by doing sketches, it allows you to jump from new idea to new idea to new idea and just develop a ton of new ideas instead of spending a lot of time trying to develop the one idea. Does that make sense? And then either, you can either hire an arranger to develop the one idea or you yourself can develop the, further develop the one idea. Does that make sense? And then what happens is those sketches, so like let's say it's just a single idea, so... Let's see, who did we have? Okay, so this guy. This is our main melody, and let's just say this was a sketch, so I'm just gonna call this. Actually, you know what? Oh, that'll work for me. Let's just say I call this sketch one, okay? Actually, you know what? Hold on. I'm gonna, I need to remember what this was. So I'm just gonna call this four part writing. Uh, I'm gonna make a new one. I'm gonna make a new one, a new block. So I can come back to this, and that's why blocks are, are very easily used as sketches. If you just want to make this sketch one, again, we're gonna go back to a four-bar phrase by default. Make sure we're still in loop mode, and then let's let's. Uh, I'm gonna uh, paste that sketched idea here. All right, now the. After sketches are developed, so the whole point of a sketch is just to get the thought out there, the melody out there. The cool part about the sketch uh, is that the sketch is copyrightable. You know what I mean? Like, if you were to just take all your sketch ideas and go, oh, these are the melody ideas that I have, single note, single instrument, melodic forms, those sketches as they stand, as long as they're original, are copyrightable. And so what a lot of composers will do is the composers will, will own the copyright. They'll make all these sketches, they'll own the copyright, and they'll hire an arranger. The arranger's work will, will be a work for hire. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but uh, essentially the arranger just gets paid once, unless there's something written in a contract that allows them to get paid again later uh, based upon mechanical or performance royalties. Most of the time, it's just paid once to then take the sketches and throw them up and expound upon them on different parts. Does that make sense? So, and what the arranger will do is they'll, they'll essentially take the part and they'll do all sorts of stuff to it, but they'll, but they'll take it and go, all right, well, what does this sound like on different instruments, you know? Am I the right one? Oh, no. You want me to borrow my keys? Yes, please. I need to get into Christina's office. Thank you. Let's see. 
there a woodwind section? Oh, it is Brass of Winds. That's it? Huh? Yeah. I mean, ideally, you could, if we transition this and made this, in, uh, let's say we jump down here and we, we drop this one for a second and we make a new instrument out of the NNXT. We drop that down here. So I mean, essentially, they're gonna they're gonna decide. Oh, let's use this here. Let's use this there. You know, we try out all these different sounds. Um, You know, so what gets to happen is, is when you're developing sketches, it's a little different. I mean, you're literally, the reason why it's called a sketch is because it can be used phrase by phrase. It doesn't have to be elongated. Um, and once you build a theme, like think about it, like once we build a theme uh, from the composition, like you're going to make a theme, like uh, think about just some basic themes that you know, like from films, it's kind of easier, uh, like Jurassic Park, you think about the Jurassic Park theme. I mean, that's literally, it's just, it's a one phrase set of call and answer. And in that call and answer phrase, uh, it, it moves a little bit, you know, in that phrase, but you're looking at about a 16 bar phrase that then gets used a million times in different ways. And, and, and or like you look at some of the stuff like Star Wars is another great example. There are these just phrase sets developed that are then recurring. And instead of the composer getting lost in all the recurringness, they focus on the development of the idea and they either later work on that or they hire an arranger to work specifically on how and where and you know to getting an exact the right the right sound for the each instrument does that make sense so it's kind of like like let's look at a director who you say for dress for for the soundtrack to get a composer just didn't want to waste his time on one idea the director might just shut down so yes they created like 20 ideas exactly the director chooses it and then they that's the one they build upon yes well i mean and, and to be honest well, most they, they most likely what they'll do is they'll still they'll actually still sketch it they'll have an they'll have a digital nowadays they'll have a digital arranger come in uh not not i shouldn't i should say uh, uh more of a digital mock-up arranger versus uh a to score arranger for actual performance and then they'll have that person mock it up they'll still have them take like the, you know 20 30 ideas mock up the best of them hand that off to the director for the director to kind of look at and think about work with and then when that they get the okay on it 
They're going to get notes back, whatever. Then they'll move to putting it to score. They'll fully arrange it to score, and then they'll get an okay on that. You know, and then once that okay goes clear, then they go and track it. Then they actually go and record it. So yeah, that's typically how it happens. So that that's how it happens on main budget films. In smaller budgets, it's there's a lot less back and forth. There's a lot more just the same guy does everything. But the model of sketching, and that's the difference between like what a, these big composers versus your everyday guy that makes compositions is when you don't have a lot of budget, you're doing all these jobs at once and you're making 10 ideas versus 50 ideas because you only have time enough to do the idea and arrange the idea, you know, to sketch the idea and arrange the idea, you know, because you're doing both jobs. So the idea with sketches essentially is you can whittle out more sketches, stretched ideas, and then have more, more on your palette and go, all right, I want this one to work with. Does that make sense? Now, the beauty of it is, is if you were to take, now when I do sketching, I do them all in the same key. If you do all your sketching in the same key, you can change the key later. But if you sketch all in the same key, if you have sketches that you like that work together as a melody and a counter melody, you can just slam those sketches together. Does that make sense? So like you can literally just copy paste and move those sketches into the same place, the same zone, you know, and that's where you start to work from it. Now the difference between, uh, now here's the, uh, here's where it really comes down to what I wanted to talk a little bit about the difference between a standard composition and a score, okay? A, a standard composition is free flow, just like writing a song. You write a song, what's the point of, of how you write the song? You're trying to generate hooks and you need to repeat those hooks in order to land the plane to, to, to get people to go, oh yeah, I know what the hook is. Make sense? But when it comes to scoring, the point of scoring is hit points in most cases. A lot of times thematically, like you think about a movie, you go watch a movie, you'll have one or two main themes that actually play in a repetitive motion. And that's the one you would expect to hear at the credits of the, of the movie. But throughout the movie, like all the action spots are typically all based upon hit points. And those hit points are, are where in the film something happens that requires a change or a strike from the music. You know, so think about a suspense film, you know, like a thriller. It, there's like a weird wind up build up and then it has to take a huge hit in order for that scary moment to take place. But it's the difference between having hits Right? And these hit points where the music will literally go, bah, you know what I mean? And, and they'll outline a chord or maybe to go, bah, rah, you know what I mean? Versus creating a melody. You see, you see the difference there? Where in a standard composition, you're thinking melody, 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 melody. And you're, when you're talking score, sometimes the sketches are not needed to be melodic. The sketches are just designed as um, something supportive, more chordal or more sustaining and they might have a drive to that hit. And then there's literally physically a, a hit, you know what I mean? Like where the brass or, you know, whoever does an actual down beat. Does that make sense? And it's very stark if you were to go listen to it. So like if you were to listen to, I don't know how often you listen to it, but if you were to go listen to the soundtrack of a motion film, you'll hear the main themes. You know, one of the main, they usually have one or two main themes. And then, but after that, the rest of it is literally just hits. You know what I mean? Like, it's hit points, it's strikes, it's, you know what I mean? Like, because it's not easy to just listen to, you know, like I, I, one time I was listening to, uh, I threw in the uh, uh, Lord of the Rings um, soundtrack, and I had my son in the car, you know, and he was a little baby, and I'm listening to it going, I can almost listen to none of this with him in the car, because it's all, it goes from happy to suspenseful in like two seconds. You know what I mean? Like it transitions from a very nice, peaceful sound, a nice warm tone to really dark and just hit, hit, hit. You know what I mean? And that's because in the film, that's how the scenes go. You know what I mean? The scenes, they don't hang out for three minutes in these scenes where everything's perfect. You know what I mean? And think about it. Every time you ever sync an actual pop song to film, how long do you hear it play? You know what I mean? You don't hear the whole thing play. Yeah, I mean, you hear the, a hook or a phrase and then it moves on, you know, because it's the film can't hang out there that long. Uh, they have to move to scene by scene. It has to keep moving. They have, you know, so it is a different approach. And even with the sketches, it's a different approach. But again, you're trying to build a palette of sketches. Like you're trying, you want that setup of sketches. Again, you're bringing it to the table. It's just like writing a research paper. 
How do you write a good research paper? You just have use a ton of research. You know what I mean? The best research papers are built on more research than less. You know what I mean? If I said, hey, I need you to write a paper on on how to how to build a guitar from A to Z, you know, from from scratch. How do you build a guitar? You know, it's going to be harder for you to pull that out of thin air. And go well. This is what I know about a guitar. This is what I, what I know about building a guitar. But instead, if you go to this resource palette, and and you just say, all right, well, I'm going to take one resource, and I'm going to make that my whole paper. If I said I need 20 pages, taking one resource is very difficult to stretch to 20 pages. But if you said well, instead, I'll take 50 resources, and I'll just take this phrase and this piece and this there, and I'll cite all this stuff in this paper, but I'll add all this to this mix. All of a sudden, you have way more information than you need. You whittle down a nice solid paper. Same thing with the these, this musical composition. You're going to branch out, create as many sketches as you can think of, and then once all those juices stop flowing, you can go back and work on arranging them. You know what I mean? After you choose the ones that you really like, you know. Same thing with pop songwriting. When you're writing pop pop music, you know, standard songwriting, guitar, uh, maybe acoustic guitar, or piano, and lyrics. Same thing applies. You know, essentially what you're what you're trying to do. Uh, is you, you essentially what you try to do is you try to set it up so that you are able to have a large array of things to work from. A lot of different basic ideas before you spend all day in the studio working on a song. You know what I mean? Like the worst thing you could ever do is just write one song, throw it in the studio, or throw it on the DAW immediately without ever having any other ideas. You know what I mean? And then what you do is you get excited. You, you know, make maybe you make 10 pop music, modern music sketches. Just basic ideas. And then out of that, you hear one that you're like, I'm really excited about this one. And maybe you're only excited about it today, but tomorrow you're excited about another one. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's a really cool idea using the sketch palette. And again, when you're using blocks and reason, you could literally just drop out these sketches, you know, and you could add a ton of blocks here and just keep sketching them out and, until, you know, until you're really happy with it. And then after that, you just, you know, once you're, you're satisfied, with a sketch, you could go back in and just do what we did with this one in the four part writing, you know, where you, you just stack, okay, we had an idea and we just stack upon that idea, you know? Um, but again, one thing I like to do or two things I like to do with my sketches, if I'm going to put the sketch in the DAW, two things I like to do, or it's really kind of more than two, but one, keep the same key signature because then you can change them. You can always change them later. You know what I mean? And if you're a simplistic writer like me, Keeping it simple, let's put it all in the key, either key of C major or A minor. We can make some other pitch adjustments or changes. You know, we can use some other uh, developmental, like uh, complex scales. Um, we could do that, but if we kind of set ourselves up with an outline of that, then we can always slide back and forth. Thank you, Izzy. Thank you. Then, you know, it makes it really super easy to, to go and, and move these. Then, then your harder task is, is once you have them and you like them, then you do need to move them to different keys and you do need to make changes to how the keys work. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much that's it in a nutshell there for for the sketches. Um, yeah, actually, let's take a break. Let's take a fifteen minute break till ten. How's that?